welcome back to another monthly favorites today we're going to be telling you about all the products that we love during the month of October also known as Julia's birthday month <laughs> just a warning uh, there's a lot of body shop in this video sorry not sorry first one and I think my most exciting favorite and potentially a game changer for my entire life slash beauty routine basically the same thing this is the body shop skin defense this is essentially a facial SPF it's SPF 50 the thing that's so game-changing about this product is I can wear it under my makeup so we know that you're supposed to wear SPF every day otherwise you'll die of skin cancer blah 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 that's very nice but until recently no one ever made a good enough sunscreen that people with oily skin could actually wear under their makeup day to day. There were very very good lightweight formulations by Derma Make Some, Helio K is really good but none of those products although very good and I wore them on the beach and when I was outside all the time none of them I could actually wear under makeup without it making my face look like a greasy mess. The Body Shop one is amazing. It sinks in to nothing. It doesn't leave a white cast on your face. It is a total lifesaver for me mm. and to the point where I've now started wearing SPF every single day. That's probably my most exciting product I've discovered the whole year. Yeah, I think it's really, really game changing. Yeah. Keeping with the sun theme ish, this is a self tanner from Clarence, and this is their self tanning milky lotion. Yup. The stuff. This is amazing. So, Julia's used this for a while now, but I hadn't tried it, um, and I had a wedding over the weekend, and I thought, okay, well, now's the time to bust this stuff out. And it is brilliant. It comes out in a white cream um, and it sinks in re really easily. It doesn't smell like that horrible self-tanned biscuity smell and it doesn't make your hands orange. It is amazing. It's unreal. It's really subtle but stunning. Like makes you look just healthier and better and not obviously tanned which is everything yeah. that I want from a self-tanner. Perfect for summer and I think I'll be using this regularly in my summer routine because I don't really like to lie on the beach but I also don't want to look like Wednesday Adams. So this it's is the so perfect good. middle ground. It's, it's basically like a gradual tanner but on steroids but mm. not to the point of like a full-blown self-tan. Mm. It's mm. basically the self-tanning product for people who hate self-tan mm. which is us. Yeah. My next favorite is a product I've been reaching for a lot and it is a bit of a love-hate product but because I've been using it so much I figure I should put it into favorites and it is a scent from Jo Malone it is wood sage and sea salt now I bought this about a year ago when we had a little shopping spree at the waterfront and I bought it because it's got a really unusual very clean marine scent and to me it just screams spring it's the thing I feel like Fresh. smelling like at this very time fresh. of year mm. so as much as I love this I do think it's a beautiful perfume the downside of the whole thing is that it doesn't last so the sad thing is it doesn't wear all day on me so as much as I find that frustrating I love the scent enough to reapply if I have to so it's a good thing and a bad thing but it is a beautiful and very unusual mm. and gorgeous springtime summertime scent my next one so earlier in the month my favorite thing was I did a hair course um, through Cole Makeup Academy which is the same academy that I did my makeup course through earlier in the year it was a five-day very intensive course um, and for someone who knows knew nothing about hairstyling I thought that it was absolutely brilliant I loved every minute of it I was quite apprehensive because I was like oh, I don't know if I actually want to know about hair anymore and blah blah but I'm so, so glad that I went through with it because I learned so much and the instructor Janine was a complete legend and the kit that they give you um, as part of the course is really comprehensive. You get everything you'll need in there. And part of what came in the kit was this. So this is a Vaudry 43mm blow dry brush and I don't normally tend to gravitate towards these tourmaline ceramic barrels so they emit negative ions which makes Ooh, your hair look kind science. of... Science! I know! <laughs> oh. um, so it makes your hair look kind of glossier and healthier and I've really been enjoying using this. I have found that I'm able to get really good volume at the root and then I've been setting my hair, which I never did before, set your hair with the cold shot button after you've blow dried it oh, to is set that it what that's for? <laughs> I know you can get these on retail box, they are um, 300 rand, very well worth the money. My next monthly favorite is a product you will have seen if you watched my most recent first impressions video and it's another real, real goodie from the drugstore and it is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Eyeshadow Primer. This is amazing! If you didn't watch that video, essentially I tested it all day with just a single wash of eyeshadow over the top and the eyeshadow did not budge. It didn't fade, it didn't crease, which is really all I'm looking for from an eyeshadow primer because my eyelids are so oily. This is as good as the Urban Decay Primer Potion, I'm just going to say it. Awesome. I did in fact test this against the Urban Decay one, so I wore Urban Decay on one eye and this on the other eye and it was uh, I think 11 or 12 hours I had that eyeshadow on and there was absolutely no difference. That's nice. Pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. My next favorite is this cuticle cream from Mavala, which I've been using 
regularly. So I've started with shellac again on my nails, which I love, but we cannot pretend that it doesn't destroy your nails because it just it does. <clears throat> so I'm trying to inject as much moisture as I can into my poor tormented nails and to keep my cuticles in good shape. It's really emollient and like a little bit greasy so they recommend that you put it on at night but I actually keep it on my desk at work and I apply it kind of two three times throughout the day and I found that my cuticles are in really great shape like I've got no dryness, no hangnails, no nothing. So nice. yeah, this is a really, really, really nice product. Another one from The Body Shop and this is the Chinese Ginseng and Rice Clarifying Polish Mask. So The Body Shop came out with a range of, I believe, five new face masks and they're all using natural remedies from different parts of the world. So this one in particular obviously uses rice grains. It's inspired by natural Chinese healing practices and essentially what it does is it helps to clarify the skin and to exfoliate it. So it's got a slightly gritty texture. It's a very thick mask so you put on like a nice decent Ooh, layer of it, it smells good. really really good and it doesn't dry down like a normal clay mask mm -hmm. although it does have a bit of clay in it so it draws impurities out and you kind of leave it on your skin for 15 minutes half an hour whatever really and then you just rinse it away with warm water and in with that action you sort of gently exfoliate it's not a harsh um, gritty exfoliator it's very gentle and I just always find that my skin looks really happy afterwards I always go in with a hydrating mask afterwards because that's just the routine I normally do so yeah I really love that that's a great mm. product they also have a charcoal mask I think it's called the Himalayan charcoal mask which looks exactly like the origins oh, geez, mask yeah. so I'm dead keen to try that mm. so if you yeah, are if you're looking for a really good new face mask these are top top quality and um, this is another old favorite but I'm so into it at the moment this is the Revlon ultra HD matte lip color and the color seduction Man, it's so good. It looks so pretty on I you. know, and this is a stain. It's way more matte on you than on yeah. you. Yeah. Or is that, have you had that on for a while? Mm, no, I've had this on for, I've applied this two or three times today. And like, this is mainly just a stain actually that's so left nice. on the lips. Um, I like that it's not a traditional matte lipstick. I don't like matte mm -hmm. lipsticks on me. So this for me works perfectly because I really like the color that it leaves on my lips. And then I can even just put like a little bit of the Clarins lip oil on the top during the day. And it looks gorgeous. I'm obsessed with this stuff. The smell is disgusting, but it does disappear. It doesn't linger on, um, on your lips, which is great. Yeah. And I really like the applicator because you can kind of use it in a lip liner way as well to kind of really exaggerate mm -hmm. your cupid's bow and to get a little bit of extra um, kind of volume around your lips or to cheat the appearance of extra volume. So this has been my lip color of choice for the month of October. It's good Love. stuff. My final favorite is a makeup <laughs> brush that I recently rediscovered. And I, I mean, I've ignored this brush for years and I really live in regret about it. This is the Sigma F80, the flat top kabuki. I've had this for probably three years. There is a local distributor for Sigma, I'll leave their details below, it's called Turquoise Studio. And essentially it's a very dense kabuki style brush with a completely flat edge. And when I first started using this, when I first got it, I found that the density of the bristles made it very difficult to move products mm -hmm. around my face. It sort of languished in my collection, I use it every now and then, but it just wasn't something I reached for. And then randomly the other day, I picked it up out of my jar of foundation brushes and started using it and found it so much easier to use than before. And I don't really know why, but... You're using different formulation foundations maybe, because I find if I'm wearing a long wearing foundation, because it dries down quicker, mm. you have less time. If it's a more fluid foundation, yeah, it's easy. possible that's exactly what it is. Because yeah. I probably was at the time was probably using this with double wear light. Yeah, I can't use that. And it was like, yeah. mm. whereas now I use it with my LA Gold BB Cream, which mm. is essentially a tinted moisturizer. So it does move yeah. around the face much more easily. And I just find in general, it is a much, it just works much better for me. Mm. So yeah, it, that actually probably is it that it works better with with thinner consistency foundations, but it's just really, really quick. It feels beautiful on the face. It's like super mm. soft and just, oh, it's lovely. And I find it really quick to buff in foundation. It does a really good streak-free job. The one thing about this brush though, is it's high maintenance in the mm. sense that I have to give this a spot clean every time I use it. So what I do is I just put a bit of, here it is, the, um, the MAC brush cleanser, I just pop it onto a sort of fold up bit of Carlton roll and I just work the brush into that and then dry it off onto a, on a dry piece. It takes two seconds. Um, but I find if I don't do that, because it's so dense, it tends to catch product into the bristle mm. here and um, that it can create a bit of a, a streaky effect as well. Mm. So you do have to keep it clean, but to be fair, you should be doing that to all your brushes anyway. So it's absolutely worth the hassle. I love this brush. In fact, all the Sigma brushes that I have, mm. I love. So really, really glad that I've rediscovered that in my stash. My final favorite. Another month, another body oil. I've already finished my Elizabeth Arden body oil, which I love, 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 as you well know. This is the Environ body oil, which contains vitamins A, C, and E. It's rich in antioxidants, so it's, you know, great for your skin, protects it against the sun and all that kind of thing. 
it smells pretty delicious. It's not as, um, as lightweight as the Elizabeth Arden one, so I don't use this during the day, I just use it in the evenings, but I've really, really been enjoying it. And, I mean, you know, what can you say about a body oil? I mean, there's not... Camilla's like body oil obsessed. I am body oil <laughs> obsessed. I'm just body product obsessed. I just mm. want to be soft because I have well, like those um, chicken skin bits on my arms. Like that is... Chicken skin. Yeah, chicken skin. Um... So I think if you combine this actually with Dermalac lotion, which is um, an alpha hydroxy acid lotion that you put on, which is supposed to really help kind of clear up any um, clogged hair follicles and what have you. It's all glamour. Mm -hmm. It's all glamour here. Um, I think actually the combination of these two would be really, really good. Okay, I have one unfavorite. I have to include it because I have strong feelings about it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Body Shop. I love 99% of what you make. This is the Panita Colada Fresh Body Sorbet. Now, I don't... Please, bang louder! I don't have any problems with the smell of this. Delicious. In fact, I think it's delicious. Mm, it's yum. a kind of pineapple coconut vibe. Yum, so summery, delicious. Mm. The texture of this product is unpleasant. I just don't get it. And I don't know if it's just me. If you have used this and you agree, please leave a comment so I know I'm not a complete freak. It looks like a hybrid between a cream and a gel, but like in a, like not in a good way. Like it looks quite textured, like a grainy, creamy, jelly. Taste. Yes. That's a very good way of describing it. It's so hard. I think it's basically, it's supposed to be a little bit like a, a body smoothie. So it's got that slightly okay. textured feel. So it's not a smooth body lotion. It's not supposed to be like that. But because of that texture, it leaves a kind of a weird bobbly film on my skin and I just can't take it. And there are very few things in life where I've tried a product and from literally the first second I've hated it. And I'm sorry, but that's how I feel about those body sorbets. It's entirely a texture and a preference issue. It's got nothing to do with whether the formulation is good or not. I think that there are some people who probably will enjoy it. And I have heard people say you put them they in... They smell the, really good yeah, though. The rain, this is the limited edition yeah. summer range, by the way. It's got They've got like a shower gel and a body butter and all sorts oh, of stuff. Oh, like the body butter will be great. Yeah, I'm but that's just that. not for me. I don't really... I'm not a fan, but the body butters, I just finished my 4,000th bottle of the Fijian Water Lotus body yeah. butter in the week, so I've got to go buy another one of those. Luckily, it's three for two until Christmas. Is it really? Yep. Sweet. Mm. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. Let us know what your favorites of the month are, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Today we've got a tag video, Jackton Hills Ride or Die. Mm -hmm. Now there's two of us, so we've cut out a couple of the categories, so it's not super, super long, and there are quite a lot of categories where we actually share the exact same favorite. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna whiz through these, hopefully it's not too long, but stick with us. Let's start with... Primer. <laughs>